What's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Richard on Data. If you're new here, my name is Richard and this is the channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. Subscribe for all kinds of content just like this and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. So there's this question which comes up a lot, which is, can data science predict the stock market? I mean, who doesn't want to work some magic in Python, develop a classifier, and then immediately know whether they should buy or sell their stocks? Then you could become a wolf of Wall Street and make thousands or millions of dollars. Then you've got the data people who aren't really in it for the money, or so they say, but they just want to play around a little bit and build some algorithms to solve notoriously complex problems. As many of you know, in the last month, the stock market has fallen off a cliff. And let's be real, if you had an algorithm that would have told you a month ago that we were right at the peak and it was time to sell, or that we're as low as it's going to get right now and that it's actually the perfect time to buy, that would be awesome. It's also a little known fact that over 70% of all stock trades that happen in the US are done by bots and algorithms. Also, Wall Street hires tons of data scientists and one of their main goals is to tackle this very problem. But at the same time, it's famously known that a monkey randomly throwing darts at a bunch of stocks has just about as much chance of beating the S&P 500 as a lot of hedge fund and mutual fund companies do. So before we dig into this, let's define what question we're even talking about here. Because usually when people talk about the market, they're referring to the entire stock market. And that's tracked by things like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is an index representing the performance of 30 different companies, or the S&P 500, which tracks the performance of 500 different companies. However, when most people partake in this exercise in the data science context, they're talking about stocks at the individual level. So what everyone wants to do in order to be a millionaire is to figure out which stocks are going to go up a thousand percent over the next year, or they want to time particular stocks so they sell at the right time and they know exactly when to buy. So we really have two different questions here. Over a longer horizon, let's say a year or more, can we predict a stock's performance? And then for day traders, can we predict how the stock is gonna close on the next day and then whether we should buy or sell? We're gonna look at the tools people use to tackle this problem, how they've done at it, and then the shortcomings. So most investors make their decisions based on things like revenue, expenses, profits, basic things that come from financial statements and SEC filings. However, a data scientist can set this problem up by leveraging what's known as alternative data. And these are things like a company's social media activity, product reviews, credit card purchases, basic things like that which are fairly publicly available. One idea that's even been pitched is the number of cars in the company's parking lot. Talk about your data being everywhere. So that all sounds great, but what's the problem? Well, actually one of the biggest problems is a lack of data. So for metrics like quarterly earnings, you literally only get those once per quarter. So even if a company's been around for 100 years, you only have 400 data points to work with. Credit card transactions are typically reported at a weekly level, and that's a lot better than at a quarterly level, but let's just say a company's only been public for five years, you still only have 52 weeks in a year times five years equals 260 weeks worth of data points. One approach that some researchers have taken if they want daily sales is this. They'll take weekly sales, divide by seven to get the mean, and then add some statistical noise just to capture some of the natural variation that happens with sales. So let's just say tomorrow's sales, they equal today's sales times some random noise factor like 0.97 or 1.02 or something like that. One recent MIT study took this approach, they utilized alternative data, and they found they could predict quarterly earnings better than Wall Street 57% of the time. That's promising, sure, but probably not the most exciting performance you've ever heard of before. There's tons more information out there which people are collectively trying to leverage. People talk about using Google search volume, which there's definitely some evidence of success with that. In particular, people are trying to combine machine learning algorithms with text mining, so using textual content out there on the internet. In fact, some people have even tried to use Twitter messages as a predictor for stock performance. 
And from a methodology standpoint, the deep learning technique of artificial neural networks is getting a lot of positive press right now just for being a really appropriate and well-suited approach to the stock market prediction problem. Now let's look at another example of somebody trying to tackle this problem. This is credit to the data scientist Jerry Zhu. His full work will be in the description. And now there are other examples out there of people trying to do this, but I think his performance is pretty typical, if not better than how most people do. Basically, he uses some Python modules, he does some work to tune the hyperparameters, and he sets out to predict the price of Google stock. He uses the years 2014 through 2016 as training data, and then 2017 and then a little bit after as testing data. Now he plays around with a lot of methods. K-nearest neighbor is one example, but he also gets into some deep learning methods. So he tries multi-layer perceptron, and then he also uses the Python module called Stalker, which makes use of artificial neural networks. This is clearly a very skilled data scientist with a lot of domain knowledge about the financial industry, and he's making use of state-of-the-art technology. So let's see how he did. So looking at the whole picture here, the model actually gets its estimate for the price of Google stock one year after the fact pretty close, but the confidence interval for that estimate goes all the way from 200 to 1800. So as a longer term investor, this would not exactly be anything to inspire a lot of decisions from me. It does do a little bit better in the short term, but you do see it's unable to accurately pick up a couple big jumps and big declines that Google stock makes. In particular, there's a huge drop in early 2018 that there's no way this model can predict a full year out. And now for the day traders, notice that the model gets it right 59% of the time that the price of the stock will go up. But it's actually wrong more often than it's right, only correctly predicting that the stock will go down 49% of the time. To provide a little context, there was a period in February of 2018 where Google's stock dropped by about 20% over a very short period of time. And this was due to a multitude of factors both on the local level and on the more global level. So on the local level, Google had failed to meet earnings expectations over that period of time. But on a more global level, investors across the entire stock market were beginning to worry about increased inflation, which would lead the Federal Reserve to probably increase interest rates. And because of this growing fear, there was just a massive sell-off across the entire board. It was really the perfect storm for Google to have a large price drop. This was in February of 2018. Try predicting that, as this model tries to do, in March of 2017. So through the couple examples that you've seen, you see that it's not like there's no predictive performance whatsoever, but a lot of these attempts to predict the stock market do seem to fall a little bit flat. Yet there are advanced, powerful algorithms being thrown at this problem. There are tons of really bright data scientists with lots of domain knowledge about the individual companies, about the financial industry as a whole, and they don't necessarily have a lot of time points of data to work with, but there are tons of different features that they are able to leverage. But still, the conventional wisdom is, with all of that, the best strategy is still just to invest in the whole market or in mutual funds, and then just buy and hold. So why is that? Well, there's a few reasons for that. Reason number one is what's known as the efficient market hypothesis. This was a theory proposed by the economist Burton Malkiel, and he basically stated that all of the known information about a particular stock's price is already reflected in its current price. And then any change in the stock price would just reflect the release of new information or random noise. As a result, he contended that stock prices are best described by a random walk. That is, each stock price deviation from day to day is random and unpredictable. In other words, this exercise is largely pointless. There's certainly some grain of truth to the idea that information about a stock is deeply embedded into its current price. So he might be onto something with this. Reason number two is, you usually cannot predict future shocks. So let's just as an example look back at the last few years and look at some of the biggest events which have rattled the stock market. You've got the outcome of the 2016 election, geopolitical tensions with North Korea and Iran, negotiation of a trade deal with China, and the virus which is currently sweeping over virtually the entire globe right now. 
All of these things had dramatic impacts on the stock market, and in order to have even a remotely accurate prediction over your relevant time window, you would have had to correctly predict these things. If we take the outcome of the 2016 election, for example, most people predicted that one wrong even the day of, let alone months earlier. Investors were understandably very nervous about North Korea tensions in 2017, China tensions in 2019, Iran tensions in mid-2019 and early 2020. So there were a lot of ups when things looked good and downs when things looked bad. And ultimately, this is all reliant on things that are done and said by human beings, specifically by world leaders. And just in the real world, you are not going to predict things like that with any degree of great accuracy. These are just examples from the last few years to illustrate a broader point. And that point is just that when you have a ton of unknowns, which all involve human beings and human sentiment, and you're combining the uncertainty from a ton of different things, the ability to predict with any great accuracy is just infeasible. And reason number three is actually solving this problem creates a massive conflict of interest. There's probably tons of groups out there that are solving this problem better than others, probably to the degree that their algorithm is generating them tons and tons of money. There's absolutely no reason then for them to treat this as a research problem and just publish their methodology so that other people could get good at this. But then let's just suppose if everyone could actually accurately predict the stock market, they would do that. Then eventually, over time, the market movement would become the prediction itself, and then nobody would make any money at all. So that doesn't do anybody any good. Now, my take here is not to be dismissive of AI and of data science in general on its role in stock market prediction. Not at all. There are algorithms out there that have utilized unstructured data, and they've come up with stock portfolios that greatly outperform the S&P 500. But there's a real question about how accurate things can get and how accurate things need to be. And it's really humbling for students of data science to realize that certain things cannot be perfect, especially when they revolve around human beings and human sentiment. Human beings are incredibly intricate and complex things, and they have thought processes which are very nuanced. They can be rational, but they're often irrational too. And just frankly, the ability to predict their behaviors and their thoughts has limits, which anyone in the data and artificial intelligence world do need to grapple with. What do you guys think? Why is the stock market prediction problem so hard to solve? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support my work, the best thing that you could do for me is to share this video. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you next time. Until then, Richard, on data.